Welcome, everybody, to another QB Power Hour. I'm very glad to have you joining us today. Today's topic is transforming your practice with automation in 2020 with Receipt Bank. We have Damien with us today. Very glad to have him joining us. Thank you, Damien. My name is Michelle Long. I'm a CPA with an MBA in entrepreneurship, the owner of Long for Success, author of five different books. Check them out on Amazon if you're interested. And very glad to have you joining us today. Um, that's enough about me, Dan. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Dan DeLong with uh, Dan Witt and a former Intuit employee. I uh, worked with them for about uh, 18, almost 18 years. So I uh, saw a lot of the, you know, the transformation of the accounting industry um, and uh, did the technical editing of QBO for dummies. Um, and, and my motto is transforming businesses through technology. So I'm really excited to, to learn a lot more about uh, what Receipt Bank can do as well. And um, yeah, so move on. <laughs> Wonderful, thank you. And Damien, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, Michelle, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Damien Grayshead at Receipt Bank, based here in Washington, D.C., where we support our U.S. and Canadian uh, accounting partners. Uh, I've been with Receipt Bank for five years now. Uh, prior to that, I was actually a customer of Receipt Bank in an accounting firm. Uh, so I, I saw the, the 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 impact that Receipt Bank and QBO had on our practice and the opportunity that was available for accountants to to not only transform their business but also transform the 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 their clients' businesses as well. So uh, thank you very much for having me and just delighted to share with you what, what some of our 8,000 accounting and bookkeeping partner firms around the world are doing in terms of automation and, and leveraging technology. So thank you so much. Well, thank you, Damien. I'm glad that we finally got you here because I, I've known Damien for years and we keep saying, you know, I need to get him on because he has great information and some great insight and stuff. So I'm really glad uh, to have you joining us today and I'm glad to be sharing this with everybody because you have so much great information for helping accounting professionals transform their practice. So perfect topic. So I'm very glad to have you here. So for those of you who might be a little bit new, details about our QB Power Hour. We've got the QB Power Hour free webinars every other Tuesday at noon Eastern time. Next one that we have coming up at the beginning of February is what's new in QBOA with Intuit. So we're going to be seeing some of the new features that Intuit's rolling out. They, oh, they've got some great stuff there. Um, so I'm glad you guys are here today and hopefully you'll join us for that one. As you know, we cover different topics. It's about QuickBooks Desktop, online, third-party apps, marketing, pricing, and a variety of topics. Here's all the links to the PDFs. Um, so for today's slides, you can get the PDF there. This is a new link. We had a 2019 link before, so this is a new link there. Um, you'll be able to access the handouts for today and all of the other ones there. So bookmark that link and keep it handy, as well as then the recordings and the podcast, so you can listen to this on the go. So you've got those links available for you. And as a reminder, um, we do have uh, the road show will be coming up again uh, for QuickBooks training um, and various certification training and things like that. That's not going to start up again probably until about May after busy season. Um, but there are free webinars on an ongoing basis. If you all want to check those out, go to that QBTrainingEvents.com. You can find that there. And uh, I am very glad to have you guys all here today. I see we've got people from sunny Florida and Boston. We've got somebody from Winnipeg um, and a variety of places. So glad to have you here. And Sandy is excited for this webinar with Receipt Bank. So Damien, we've got people excited to have you here. So what we're going to be fans. talking. <laughs> yeah, I got some fans here. So what we're going to be talking about today is standardizing your firm and why that's important and why we want to do that and take control of our firm. We'll also then talk about automating the processes and then Receipt Bank as an essential tool in this. And Damien, Dan and I aren't going to take too much time because Damien's got great insights and you all hear from Dan and I all the time. <laughs> um, so we're going to try to give uh, Damien lots of opportunities to share with us. But first of all, we want to talk about standardizing your firm. And while we're getting into this, I'm going to go ahead and launch our first poll question here. Which of the following do you or your clients use? So when it comes to accounting, what are you all using? Are you using desktop, online, spreadsheets, or some other app? And this is one of the things where when we talk about standardizing, we really need to standardize the tools that we're working with. Our industry has changed so much. Like Dan said, you know, you said what, Dan? You were within two for 18 years? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm, 
it's Go it's ahead. pretty fantastic to see how things have changed. I mean, just from I, I think the biggest thing, you know, at first was just the the ability to to be at the the client's location. You know, accessing the QuickBooks data. You know, and and with online and other online tools being able to transfer data back and forth you know now that that time of driving physically being in the in that location is is kind of taken a back seat no pun intended but it wasn't <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i've had my practice i hate to even say how long but a long time more than 18 years and uh, you're so right dan i remember you know i used to work let's say i had three clients in one day because I would spend my time driving all over town, dealing with traffic and all that. And when I first decided to start working remotely, it was so liberating. But we still had all those pains where the client would forget to leave their computer on. And, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just not just even physically there, but just the, the work that we do has changed tremendously. Um, and so that's why I'm really glad to have you guys talking today about how we need to change our practice going along with it. I'm going to go ahead and, and close this poll question, and I'll share it with you. So 85% of you are using QBO, 59% desktop, 24% spreadsheets, and 21% another accounting software. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is so many of us will just use whatever the client's using. So you might have some clients on desktop, some clients on QBO, some that are doing spreadsheets, some that are shoebox clients and they're not doing anything. And that makes us really inefficient because we're not standardized. Plus, you got to try to know all these different softwares and different systems and things like that. So we really want to focus on trying to standardize our firm. And if you think about it, you know, we are a service provider, whether you're an accountant, a bookkeeper, a tax professional, consultant, we're, we're professionals, right? We provide services. Well, and if you think about other service providers like your dentist, your auto mechanic, or your lawyer, we don't tell them what tools to use. You know, you don't go into your mechanic and say, oh, you know, are you using Snap-on tools or are you using Craftsman tools, right? I mean they decide what tools they're going to use in their business and in their profession. And that's what we as accountants and bookkeepers need to decide as well, is what tools are we going to use? You know, for example, I used to be desktop and QuickBooks Online, and eventually I decided I'm done with desktop. I just want to use QBO. So now when new clients call me, if they're still using desktop and if they're not willing to change to the tools that I use, so the software as well as the apps and things like that, if they don't want to move, then uh, they're not the right client for me. You know, we can't let our clients dictate the tools that we use. We are in charge. And so I think some of us are guilty of that where we let the clients try to tell us how to run our business and we need to flip that. We decide how we're running our business. And when we standardize, there's a lot of benefits to the standardization. Our increased efficiency, consistent client experience, they know what to expect. And the beautiful thing is, too, it's scalable. Once you develop a system, it's going to be scalable. And, you know, I first learned this, gosh, probably five, six years ago, I went down to New Zealand for a conference and I had the privilege of meeting with several small firms down there. And there was this one gentleman, I can't remember his name, but he wasn't even an accountant or a bookkeeper, but he set up the processes in a standardized system. And then he hired in these bookkeepers and accounting professionals, and they could deal with hundreds of clients with a handful of people because they had developed a standardized system and automated their processes, which made them extremely efficient and they could scale it up to handle a lot more clients. So we really need to take advantage of this technology and transform the way we are doing our practice. And you know, one of the things that I think we're all guilty of is doing things the same way we've always done it. You know, well, that's how we've always done it. And I have a silly story. <laughs> I love stories because it helps people remember it. So there is this family, and they were cooking ham for the holidays. And uh, so the mom gets the ham, and she cuts the ends off of the ham. And the daughter says, well, mom, why are we cutting the ends off of the ham? And the mom says, gosh, I don't know, because that's what grandma always did. Let's call grandma and ask her why we're cutting the ends off the ham. So they pick up the phone, they call grandma and say, Grandma, why do we cut the ends off the ham? Grandma says, because I didn't have a pan big enough for the ham. 
And so we continue doing things the same way without even realizing why we're doing it sometimes. And that's where with our practice, we have to question, why are we doing this? How are we doing this? And is there a better way? And think fresh and start fresh because the old way of doing things just doesn't apply anymore. We've got new tools and new technology that we need to transform our practice, incorporating that stuff with us. Yeah. Um, it also I, helps. Yeah, Dan, go ahead. Yeah, I was uh, I was watching. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. It's founder. It's called Founder. It's on Netflix. It's the story of uh, Ray Kroc and uh, and, and oh, McDonald's. Yeah. And uh, I mean, just some of the things that they did to to make this standardization. I mean, the, the McDonald's brothers. They did a. They took their entire uh, company, the, all the employees, drew a map on a tennis court of where things were, and just ran a play. You know, it was almost like a football play after play <laughs> after play to get to get the 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 things just running like clockwork. And they turned. You know, you, you think of McDonald's, whatever you think about McDonald's. You know, I love them or hate them, but they are you know an assembly line of food, and yep. those practices. Of, of the standardizing what they did and then how, I mean, it's really a cool, a cool story, but um, how he, you know, how Ray was able to enforce uh, those standardizations through buying up real estate and then, <laughs> you know, yep. kind of strong arming them to be able to, to stay in line. Um, it's just a really cool story. If, uh, if, it if it, it is. I, I couldn't agree more, Dan. I, I love that movie. It's called The Founder, for those of you that would like to watch it. It was very good. And that's what we need to do for our practice. We need to automate and standardize our processes. So it's a well-oiled machine. Whichever person comes in to work on the client should be able to pick it up and use it and, and know what's, what to do next and things like that. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to the standardization. And we need to realize that when we're standardizing and, and automating your firm, there's several things involved. The people. And the people don't have to be your employees. You could be pulling in subcontractors. So, for example, I work a lot with other accounting professionals depending on the industry and the needs of the client. I'm not a fishbowl expert. If I have somebody that needs inventory, I might turn to Jean Terrazevitz or somebody that knows fishbowl really good or Will English who knows point of sale really well. And so the people, you know, you can bring in people on an as-needed basis with your clients. Um, but then also if you have employees – if you have standardized processes and somebody's out sick, like let's say Dan calls in sick today, anyone else could step in and take over and do the work that he was doing because it's a standardized process. You can't have people say, well, I don't know what he was doing because it's all the same. And so we also need to formalize and try to automate those processes. You know, and this is where a lot of times, you know, we do it, we used to call it Sally, S-A-L-Y, same as last year. And again, we need to quit doing that. We need to reevaluate our processes. And this is where there's a lot of opportunities for us and our clients, because a lot of our small business clients, they start their business because, you know, they like what that is, or it's a hobby or whatever. They start their business not because they're an expert at, at their business processes, but because they want to start that business, and that's where we can help them with what is the most efficient process for their orders, for their receipt capture, and things like that. And that's where we can turn to the technology to automate these processes for the work that we're doing and or the work that the clients are doing. And so we need to remember we're in charge and we make the rules. We need to define the services, the processes, and those systems for ourselves as well as help our clients with this and I call it appify the processes because we can look for third-party apps where we can appify the process and automate that process um, but we have to remember it starts with us and and we make those rules not the clients um, Dan do you want to add anything in there yeah just um, I mean from my perspective of, of being an, an you know going from an employee for for being such an, an employee for such a long time to you know, out there on your own, and I'm using air quotes there if you can't see that, uh, <laughs> that, you know, I always wanted to uh, please, you know, because we're a service-based business, I always wanted to please people, and you tend to overextend yourself by doing that, and now you, you can't juggle all, you know, keep all the balls or the plates spinning 
uh, at, at a certain point. But what is going to find itself to you is, you know, where are you going to find that joy? I think we talked about that a little bit last time. You know, find out what what you enjoy, what works best for you, um, and then you know, continually pr- improving those those processes. Right. And uh, Rachel typed in here in the questions box that she has a hard time justifying the cost of QuickBooks to a small client who doesn't use the online and will never sign on to use QBO to review or do anything. And Rachel, that is a good question here, and, and it leads into this next slide here. If you're standardizing your firm, what's the right type of clients for you? And if in the sense of the cost of something, like the cost of QBO and stuff, I will ask you this question, and I usually ask it in a live audience. You know, how many of you are doing tax returns? How many of you do tax preparation? You know, in about half the room or two-thirds, raise your hand. And I'll say, how many of you use a tax prep software to do your tax returns? Of course, everybody does, right? Well, why, why, does, why do people not go to irs.gov Download the PDF tax form, fill it out manually, make all these copies, and mail them in. And usually everybody starts laughing at me because that's absurd. We would not do tax returns manually. It makes no sense. When we use tax prep software, it costs us hundreds and thousands of dollars. But we are willing to spend the money on that tool because it allows us to do more tax returns, more efficiently, more accurately, and ultimately it makes us more profitable. So we're willing to spend thousands of dollars on tax prep software. That's your power tool. And it's the same thing with QuickBooks or with these third-party apps like Receipt Bank or others. These are our power tools that allow us and our clients to get way more done faster and ultimately be more profitable. Research has proven small businesses that invest in technology are more profitable. They have increased revenues and increased profitability. So when we appify the processes, if you just look at the cost, you're missing the big picture here. Because the reality is the return on investment far exceeds that cost. So when we're looking at what kind of clients are going to fit our standardized firms, they have to recognize the value of you as well as the value of these tools. And this is where, too, and I, I, one more story and then I'll move on. But I was working with um, a pro advisor and, and she was needing help to pick out an inventory app for her client. We found an inventory app that was about $300 a month. She says, oh, my gosh, my client is not going to spend $300 a month on an app. You know, no, they're not going to want to do that. I said, let's talk with the client. Let's meet with them, present to them the benefits of this app, and let the client make the decision. The client was like, oh, my God, that's incredible. I can get rid of these two people in the warehouse. $300 a month is cheaper than the headcount of two people. I can put them on sales to help grow the business. Because they immediately recognize the impact that would make on their business. So we need to focus on the ROI, the return on investment, because the reality is the cost is far outweighed by the benefits of all these. Also, our clients, hopefully you can fit into a niche or a specialization. Let's say you want to specialize in construction clients or nonprofit entities or whatever. That allows you to focus on those apps and and that workflow for those types of clients so that you're more efficient. So our clients need to fit into our niche, fit our process. They need to be coachable and trainable. If they're not the right client for us, we need to say no. I'm sorry, refer them on to somebody else. And I know that's hard when you're first getting started because you need any client to pay the bills. (laughs) Um, But the reality is, as your business grows, you want the right client and not every client is the right client for you. So we want to focus on the right client. Then we get into automating these processes. And this is where I don't want to spend too much time on this because Damien's actually got some great examples and everything. But when we automate, we now have timely information. We're up to date. We're able to collaborate with those clients. Even if the client isn't logging in, what I like to do for the clients that never log into QuickBooks, send them automated reports. Send them a weekly sales sales report. Send them a weekly collections report so they can stay on top of overdue invoices and things. You also allows you to connect the front and back office in, in places where you have like retail and things like that. And we have significant reductions in data entry. And this is where Receipt Bank is so incredible. Nobody has to enter the data anymore. All you got to do is take a picture. 
just take a picture of that. So, I mean, it's incredible what we can do with all these apps out here in appifying these processes. Um, Dan, do you want to add anything? I want to, I want to bring Damien in here um, to talk about the whole, you know, automating the processes and stuff. Yeah. I mean, uh, from, from the Intuit's perspective, you know, there was a, there was a period of time where, um, you know, the focus was enter data once and done, you know, then it's, feeds into everything else but now it's going to don't even enter data at all <laughs> you know you're you're not needing to enter the data at all and 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 now it feeds into into all into everything which is which is very exciting uh when when you think about it but now you're a data manager as opposed to uh, a data entry uh and that's that's the that's the transformation that that the industry is kind of going in and you know what else, Dan, that, that's a good point, is also when we get away from bookkeeping or accounting, we get into more specialized services like the data management analysis and things like that, we can command higher prices because the more specialized services can and do have a high, higher prices. So we do need to go through a needs assessment and talk to the client about where they need um, apps and automation and stuff. And I'm just going to go ahead because I just love Damien's content so much. Um, I'm going to bring Damien in here and pass control to you, Damien. And while we're doing that, I'm also going to launch this poll question. Are you currently using Receipt Bank or Expensify? Are you using the new QBO Receipt Capture? Are you using some other apps for receipt capture? Because this is a significant time changer when we when we use something like Receipt Bank um, for getting this data in there. Um, so, Damien, I did pass control to you, and we've got the poll question going. Okay, so I think once we have the uh, the, the poll question done, Michelle, you should be able to see my screen, and I'll just. Uh, hold off there as well. And wonderful to see we got a few Receipt Bank uh, partners on today's webinar as well, which is great. And also uh, really cool to see that um, people are using the receipt capture from QuickBooks Online. But I think importantly, 44% uh, aren't using anything. And so so that worries me because, that, well, or, or alternatively, it's a, a, a tremendous opportunity for some automation, for some efficiency gains very quickly uh, in the new year. Yes, and I'm going to go ahead and give you guys like five more seconds for this poll question. Remember, the poll questions are informational only. We don't have CPE for today's webinar. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close that, and I'll share the results real quickly. And I agree with you, Damien, that 46% of the people that aren't using anything, boy, you all, this is a great opportunity. Wait till you see and hear more about um Receipt Bank and what it can do for you and how it can transform your practice. So, Damien, um, I think it's all you now. Oops, hold on, hold on. I didn't close that poll. Okay. Why is the poll not going away? I think, uh, Damien, you need to uh, share. I'm the uh... At the top, there's a sharing option, and it'll tell you what you're sharing. Uh, the, the control panel. Yep, I'm sharing my main screen. What's happening? Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, because hold on. Um, yeah, because that poll, let me that click share and hide again. There, now is it gone? And then... Um, Damien, you know what? Let me, let me take it back to me and then I'll pass it back to you. Okay, perfect. So I got show my screen. Are you all seeing my screen now? Yep, yep, I can see it. Okay, now let's change it back to Damien. Show my screen. There we go. I think we're good. Yay! All right. It just got <laughs> stuck. <laughs> okay. <The> technology. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michelle and Dan, thank you very much. And I, I, I want to talk about bookkeeping automation uh, first, then jump into a little bit about Receipt Bank, see it in action, and just show you some of the tasks which can uh, be automated and, and show you how Receipt Bank does that. Also talk to you about how some of our partners are presenting this to our, uh, uh, presenting this to their customers, to their clients, and helping them save 
a whole bunch of time as well. Uh, so let me launch uh, straight into the presentation. Most importantly, folks, my email address is down there. If you do have any questions following today's webinar, we've carved out some time for it. Um, so, uh, but if I don't get to them, uh, or if something comes up after the webinar, please don't hesitate to get in touch, damien at receiptbank.com. Um, as I said previously, I, I used to work uh, in an accounting firm and I used Receipt Bank and saw the difference that it made in our business. That was, that was six years ago now. Uh, today, we're processing more than 10 million documents. Uh, that's receipts, that's bills, that's uh, supplier invoices, so sales invoices, uh, expense reports, bank statements, credit notes, all of the documents associated with your client's bookkeeping function. And the really key thing here, ladies and gentlemen, is all of that's happening in real time. Uh, we're halfway through the month. There's no reason why we shouldn't have half the documents collected organized, processed, ready for your review. Uh, one of our partners, Anna Reddy, she's out of uh, uh, SoCal uh, in Orange County. She has a one day close. So on the, uh, the, the, the first of the month, she's getting out the financial reports to her clients. She's getting out the, uh, the flux analysis, which is the budget versus actual, on the first day of the new month. Imagine the insights that Anna is able to provide, the discussion points that Anna's uh, able to have, because the information's being processed in real time. Before uh, I, I sort of went on the Receipt Bank QBO journey, we would have to wait for everything to come to us from our client before we could even get started. Um, and, and what we saw with Receipt Bank uh, acting as sort of the, the, the collection and organization point was we could collect client information throughout the course of the month. Just because our processing time is around 24 minutes, that doesn't actually matter because the information is coming in throughout the course of the month, being processed throughout the course of the month. So we come in and we review as we need to. But the key thing is we're halfway through the month. There's no reason why we should uh, be, be uh, there's no reason why we should uh, not be processing our client data. So while you're on today's webinar, spending time with clients, getting those 1099s and, 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 and W2s uh, out to clients, Receipt Bank can be collecting, organizing, and, and preparing all of the information. Um, I really love this quote here because it really sums up um, automation and, and the current situation that I, I see uh, happening in a lot of accounting firms. First rule of any technology used in a business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. But uh, automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify that inefficiency. And going back to, to Michelle's initial point of standardization, we go into a lot of accounting firms and they're supporting four and five different general ledgers uh, to carry out a pretty similar function. Uh, and what that means is our, our processes, our people, uh, they all have to be slightly different to perform a similar function. So let's look at how we actually standardize a lot of the processes processes uh, so we can magnify the efficiency uh, and, and again I go into a lot of accounting firms and there's a lot of inefficiency which stems from people doing things their own way and more often than not that has been dictated by the client. Uh, Michelle's comment there that the client comes to us with something and we adapt why did they first start using that tool? Probably because a, another advisor recommended that they should that they should use it. And I can almost guarantee you that your clients are crying out for, for you to help them choose the right tool set that's going to help streamline their back office. Uh, so where do we automate in the bookkeeping process? Um, a lot of people start with the client. But what I would contend is start with the core functions within your within the bookkeeping process. And these core functions apply, for the most part, to each and every one of your clients. There's all a, a source document issue, most likely payroll. There's probably, hopefully, an engagement letter that's been signed at the start of this year. Uh, there's probably some data entry probably some accounts payable, accounts receivable, a general ledger requirement, and then some reporting as well. Um, start with these core functions 
because what we're going to see is these core functions are applicable to all types of business. There might be some inventory, there might be some points of sale, there might be some time collection requirements as well. That'll depend on the, the actual industry and the particular client, but they've all got source documents, they've all got AP and AR, uh, they've all got a, a general ledger, and, and, a, and I do hope they've all got an engagement letter as well. So start with the core functions rather than the client. And then what we can do is we can dig a little deeper into the actual core function. So what is the current state of play? So Michelle's needs analysis that we touched on before, um, where are we currently? How is the information currently coming in? And more often than not, information's coming in every which way but loose. Uh, and when it's not standardized, when the client dictates the way information comes in, uh, things fall through the cracks. Uh, and more often than not, clients dictating things coming in because that's just the way they've always done it. Uh, the, no one else has explained them that there is a better way. And your mechanics, your restaurateurs, your, your uh, dentists, they're so busy running their own dental practice, uh, auto uh, auto shop, they don't know what's, uh, what's best practice in terms of back office organization. But who does? The bookkeeper and accountant. So this is a really good opportunity to talk to your clients about better ways of getting their stuff, and we'll call it stuff, organized. What we want our clients to be thinking about is if our accounting team needs it, let's just find it, let's just get it to them, and then the accounting team can decide what to do with it. I remember in our accounting practice, Cherry on our front desk, she could have 30 and 40 minutes on the timesheet before we even got to the actual preparation of the, 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 the data. Why? Because someone was rifling through this shoebox of stuff, uh, putting it in data order, uh, getting it smoothed out, moving the, the delivery dockets out that we didn't actually need. Um, that was not the best use of, of, of Cherry's time. Uh, and I loved what uh, Michelle said earlier, is that the $300 inventory um, uh, application freed up two people in that organization to do much more valuable activity. And, and it's exactly the same in our collection and organization of client data uh, that will free up your administrative time, uh, team's time uh, to focus on, on more valuable activities such as client service. So within the core function, build the list of tasks. And so I just got, got us started there with the data comes in every which way but loose, the documents have to get organized, the work scheduled, data entry AP takes place, data entry reconciliation, um, the list of queries goes out and I, I remember having to fill the Excel spreadsheet full of all of my queries for the client that I would send to them at the end of the month, maybe uh, halfway through the month if, 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 if it was a, a, a bi-weekly client. But then I could be waiting three days, seven days, two weeks before the client had actually gotten back to me. So look at the way it's currently being done list out every single step of the process, and then what we wanna do is we wanna look at the technology that can help us eliminate the bottlenecks. So the other area in which we can automate is not only in those core functions, but in the bottlenecks. So think about, we're waiting for clients to send information. Uh, a huge bottleneck is creating proposals, reviewing timesheets, partner review and status check. So these are other areas in our workflow uh, that we can uh, that we might be able to to automate as well. It's really important that we have one set of rules, folks. Who is responsible? Which parties? Who's doing what? Not only in our own office, but also with our clients as well. That was something really interesting that we found when we talked to one of our partners, Jessica Pillow. Uh, her bookkeeping she, uh, bookkeeping is is a, a a critical part of the the, the larger accounting firm, uh, but there was um, uh, there was a situation several times where the client thought that, that the firm was taking care of it, and the firm thought the client was taking care of it, and lo and behold, that was in paying bills, paying credit cards, and what what actually happened? Uh, there were Payments were late, attracted credit card charges, attracted late charges, and a whole lot of dissatisfaction between the client and accountant. So it's really important to create this one set of rules. And this is actually the template that Jessica created for her firm, and, and I'd love to share that with uh, with folks uh, if they're interested, because what she did here is she looked at all of the, uh, the core functions and then all of the tasks within those core functions 
and then who was responsible for it. Now, Jessica Pillow, Pillow May, uh, she's out of the United Kingdom, so this is in the Queen's English. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm translating in, into American English as we speak, so I'll, I'll be able to share this with uh, with attendees today. But what she did was she created uh, this this scoping work agreement, and then basically what happens is all of the tasks associated with the bookkeeping function are listed. Out here. And then in columns, what we have is we have. Uh, who is responsible for it? So is the firm, Pillow May, responsible or is the actual company responsible? And more often than not, when we're starting to engage with the client, the client typically wants to do a couple of things to try and reduce the bill. That's fine as long as they've got the appropriate X in the appropriate column, meaning that the client is completely aware that they are responsible for it and then any notes that need to be associated with that particular task. More often than not, what happens is these X's in the company columns, uh, they head over into the firm column because the, the, the company realizes the best use of their time is not on these bookkeeping tasks, but instead it's about making their product better, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you do want the, the, the template, um, uh, we've got a poll question a little bit later on, but this is a great way uh, to 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 manage expectations and manage the scope of a, of a bookkeeping engagement and in fact this should be a part of the year-end engagement review uh, because what we want to do is have the conversation would you like the template to be emailed um, reply there and we'll get that out to you but this is a great part of the conversation particularly if the scope changes so if more transactions or more bills or anything along those lines need to be paid uh, then then that's where we need to, to deliver uh, have that conversation around who is responsible for doing what okay and, and so Damien I, I think it's great that you're sharing that with people because so many times we do try to put in the engagement letter who's doing what, but I love that format um, because it helps, like you said, clear up any any confusion over who's responsible for what. It makes it very clear, you know, who's doing what and everything. And so I love that. So I'd encourage you guys all to to get that um that that template from them and then you guys can customize it for your own practice it's a great resource and I want to thank Damien uh, for making it available to you all no absolute pleasure and it's a, most importantly it's a living breathing document so if a client ever calls in to say can you do this out comes the template to say oh we can but that's changing the scope of this agreement so let's yep. review the price at the year I end love it. yeah exactly so living and breathing document Okay, so I'm going to give you guys about five more seconds. If you'd like that template to be emailed to you, go ahead and click yes, um, and I'm going to close that poll question. Only about 80% of you have answered, so if you want the template, that's easier than us, you know, getting all these emails individually from people saying, can you send it to me? Um, so go ahead and mark yes, um, and then Damien will make sure that you all get that email to you. So I'm going to close that poll question in five, four, three, Two and gone. All right. Thank you, Damien. Sorry about okay. that. So we should be back. Uh, we're back. What we're going to talk about, uh, best in breed apps. And, and Michelle touched on this earlier. As you can see here, uh, th these are functions. Uh, they mirror what we already discussed. Um, and this is where the systemization and standardization is really important because if we have one set of tools that allows us to do this, uh, then it means that we're going to enable the flow of information with one click. So for example, if any of your clients have bills, receipts, bank statements, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Receipt Bank is probably the best place to store those. I'm obviously biased to say that the Receipt Bank is, but once it's in Receipt Bank, we can decide where we want to send the information. Does the bill need to be, does the bill need to be paid? So therefore we'll send it to bill.com or can we send it straight to QBO? Uh, what does the, the reimbursable expense, the expense report need to be reimbursed? Can it be done through Gusto? But the key thing, ladies and gentlemen, is this integrated platform. Um, I see a lot of duplication of data entry in the accounting process. Uh, and I see a lot, of, uh, a lot of time being spent moving it from one system into another system. Uh, but the nice thing about, say, T-Sheets into Gusto, Receipt Bank into QBO, 
back to Dan's point, we manage the information and review the information, and then we send it into the appropriate destination. The other thing that I really love about these cloud-based tools is the audit readiness of the data. Audit readiness and the fraud protection, the internal controls that these tools bring to the table. So we talked about efficiency, time saving, et cetera, which is great for the accounting firm. But what I would contend is we need to talk to our clients about things like internal controls, audit readiness, disaster readiness. Um, just personally, I was, I was in Australia uh, over the, the, the new year and the, the wildfires there are, are, are devastating. I want my clients to be focused on uh, their community, their family, uh, being safe because uh, we've got the tools in place to take care of their business data. Uh, time fraud, expense reimbursement fraud and AP fraud are three of the biggest sources of internal fraud in a small business. And small fraud, when fraud hits small business, it's in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And we as trusted advisors, we can be talking to our clients about tools like Receipt Bank that just bring visibility into where a client's uh, money is being spent. One partner, uh, they used to just code off the bank feed. So the American Express bank feed would, would download into QBO and the, the bookkeeper, they just, uh, they just cash coded. Uh, when we implemented Receipt Bank, um, they found us at a conference, they thought this would be great, uh, they implemented it with the, uh, with the client. American Express bill was down $30,000 a month. Why? Because now there was visibility and accountability into how the money was being spent. Uh, and when we actually went in and had a look, uh, the, the six cardholders of the American Express they were running their personal Ubers, their personal Starbucks, their personal American Airlines, all through the corporate card because previously there was no accountability there. So yes, we talk about time saving, efficiency, standardization, scaling. I would really encourage you to talk to your clients uh, this month as we kick off the year about guarding them against fraud, strengthening their internal controls. Um, if, if you've got restaurant clients, I can almost guarantee you their staff are having their friends clock in for them uh, and so committing time fraud. Again, five minutes, ten minutes here and there, not a big issue, but when you put that across the course of the year, uh, that's tens of thousands of dollars of payroll fraud that's being committed and we, I think, have an obligation to, uh, to, to talk to our clients about this and the best thing, this will be my last point before we go to a demo, is that these tools are relatively inexpensive to bring that level of peace of mind to the table. Um, so I don't need them uh, uh, all uh, in January to, 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 to be, uh, to be uh, implemented, but let's have a plan in place to strengthen our clients' internal controls and, and protect what is their biggest asset, which is their ability to, to, to generate revenue and generate profit. Okay, without further ado, let's go live and let's just show you uh, automation in process. So hopefully you can see my screen there. What we've got and hopefully the, the new Receipt Bank part or some of the Receipt Bank partners on, on today's call, uh, they will see there's a new layout. Uh, so we're constantly improving, constantly uh, looking at ways in which we can help our partners become more efficient. Uh, the, the stats are in and, and basically what's happened here is we've reduced the number of clicks uh, by about 30% and that translates to real time saving. But here you've got one central location with all of your clients on it. This dashboard available in our optimized subscription, the, the, the number one column I love here is latest submission. So if a client of mine hasn't submitted something within the last seven days, I need to rouse on him because uh, there's no reason that I, I'm 99% sure unless they're on vacation, they've incurred an expense. So, so they haven't got the information into the system uh, and this data submission is a, a column which really enables us to manage our clients much better. I can quickly glance here and see if I've got any problem clients uh, that I need to address. Let's jump into Automation Nation and we change over to, uh, to an orange screen here. And this is where all of the, uh, the, the client data is coming in. 
as you can see on the left hand side I've got costs I've got sales, I've got expense reports, and I've got bank. Now, this sort of reflects the different classification of the information coming into Receipt Bank. Costs is pretty easy. That's the receipts. That's the uh, the, 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 the the supplier bills, the credit notes, uh, all of the, the documents coming in from our clients. We want to make it as easy as possible and give your clients the tools to get information into the system. I love the scan and upload functionality. Uh, and one of our partners, Alastair Hayward, when a new client comes on board, he buys them to a part of the onboarding package is two things. One's a high speed scanner, and I think it's a Canon something that he can uh, cost about $250. And the other is a, a, a low cost tablet. Uh, and he gives the clients these tools, this hardware, so that they can scan and upload the documents at the end of every day. Love this multiple items PDF. So I can scan all of the today's documents, indicate that it's a multiple items PDF, and then Receipt Bank will split everything apart, uh, bring together the multi-page uh, multi items. Um, it'll flag it a, a, a duplicate if it's been raised as well. So uh, a lot of our accounting firms as well still use this for some of their Schedule C clients. The Schedule C client brings in the, the shoebox of stuff um, and the first thing that they do on the front desk is scan and drag and drop it into the system to get to work recognising everything. Dedicated email address, so this is customizable, uh, and anything that's coming in uh, can be sent to this receiptbank.me address. What's really important here, ladies and gentlemen, is that every Every receipt bank user, and there are unlimited users in uh, in in unlimited client users within Receipt Bank. They all have an account, and that's really important because of that audit trail that we touched on earlier. Uh, so we can see who's submitting the information. Mobile app uh, of the 10 million documents coming in, uh, about uh, 45, 55, 45, 48 of them coming in via the mobile app. Uh, and I've always contended that as long as your client can take a photo of their pet, their lunch, uh, their vacation, they can take a photo of a source document. Um, and it is as simple as snapping a picture. Uh, but then you might go to add more detail where you can write a note on it, uh, mark it as billable. Uh, mark a project on it. Uh, there's a whole host of different uh, in, additional information that your client can add to it uh, that will make your life infinitely easier and reduce those queries that we touched on earlier. Last but not least, uh, we've got our fetch connections here uh, and we're going to fetch supplier invoices and supplier receipts. So uh, key one here is our Amazon receipts that have all of the detail that sits within it. That sits on Amazon. Let's connect Receipt Bank to Amazon. We'll go and get it for you. Uh, that's going to eliminate the queries about the Amazon purchase. Was it office supplies? Was it cost of goods? What was it? Because we can see it. A question's come in that, uh, that, that is, do we do bank fetch? Uh, and unfortunately, we don't. We tried, uh, but connecting to clients, banking institutions is incredibly difficult. Maintaining the security connections, incredibly difficult, and the sheer volume of connections, uh, the sheer volume of banks. So unfortunately, we tried, but we, we couldn't bring it to our partners with the level of confidence. Uh, so unfortunately, we, we, we had to retreat from that functionality. But now QBO, and I know Canada, um, for, we've, we've got a number of Canadian uh, folks on today's call. I know the the statements are showing up in the Canadian QBO, so I think that's good news for, for US QBO. But again, the sheer volume of connections and also the ever-changing security uh, framework of the banking institutions makes that incredibly difficult. And so unfortunately we don't, uh, but we have more than 3,000 connections to different suppliers around the world AT&T, the utility companies, Amazon, uh, Comcast, etc. So we can get those for you, uh, eliminating one of the, the the stumbling blocks for you. In terms of bank, but, folks. So Damien, can I ask you a question? Of course you can. Okay, so let's say you've got your client. He's a construction client. He goes to the hardware store and he buys some job materials and, and things like that. He takes a picture of that receipt and then. Um, can he indicate which job it's for or which customer it's for? 
Yeah, absolutely. And let's just have a look at this example here. Um, so we go from our inbox into the actual item detail. And as you can see here, this looks like a meal receipt. Um, and let's just imagine that that was a Home Depot. But yes, we can. Uh, that could be marked as billable from the mobile app. Uh, and the particular uh, class and location could be tracked here as well. Uh, and also any description uh, could be entered also. So yes, the, the, the client could select that when they take the photo. Yeah, and that's a good uh, good call out there. Seeing the uh, the, the the photo there, um, and and knowing that you know QBO now has you know receipt capture as as it's rolling out, and then you know some people will be like, well, why don't I just use that? You know, how does that differ here? Yeah, good question, Dan. Um, so I th I think receipt capture is a really good entry level product. Um, so let's go back to a couple of the things that we've touched on already. Duplicates, that's a big one. Um, different user levels and making sure we've got a complete uh, audit trail of who's submitting information uh, and then also who's editing information. Uh, the nice thing about Receipt Bank here is it's unlimited users on the client side, uh, whereas I think the actual user numbers are, are associated with um, with uh, with the number of users within QuickBooks Online. So there's a bit of a challenge there at the moment, though I think that will change. Another thing that's really nice, uh, within Receipt Bank, we've got the receipts, the sales invoices, uh, the credit card uh, notes, the, the revenue sales side of things. So all of the source documents are sitting in one location uh, now, rather than a, a location for AP, a location for, for receipts. Uh, so that's another side of things which I think is really important. Uh, and then, I mean, I could go on, uh, but then one of the other things as well is our, our expense reimbursements. Now everything is coming into the system. Uh, and so our, our accounting and bookkeeping team is in one central location, rather than going to disparate sources for all of their different clients. So I, I think, if, if I was to sum it up, I think Receipt Bank is far more robust and is very much the pro advisor's tool, the accountant's tool, whereas I think Receipt Capture is really good for, for, that, for that single owner, sole proprietor type business. I know where my money's being spent, I can code that there. But as soon as you bring in multiple credit cards, as soon as you bring in AP functionality, as soon as you bring in reimbursable expenses, then you're going to need something a bit more robust. Uh, and that's where I think uh, Receipt Bank's sweet spot is. So slightly larger than those micro business um, all the way up to, to, to multi-million dollar business. Dan, does that uh, to cover that? Yeah, I was uh, I was actually listening to the Cloud Accounting pod podcast. You know, shout out to Blake and David, um, and they were talking to Valerie, I think, from Intuit, and she was talking about this very thing of the receipt capture, and you know, does that step on you know other apps' toes? You know, when they enter into something like that, and and she said exactly the same thing you did. Is like, you know, we want you know Intuit wants to you know be that entry level and cover that kind of uh, particular client and then you know as people's needs grow that's where these specialized apps can really fill the gap that that intuit can't do across the board because they can't do everything yeah absolutely and another example is expense reports um our expense reports work perfectly for the small small medium-sized businesses but as soon as the business gets a little larger there might be, uh, we, we have one layer of approval, so I submit my expense report to Dan, Dan approves it and goes off for reimbursement. But as soon as we get into a larger organization with maybe multi-department uh, multi approvals, uh, specific policies around uh, mileage, around uh, travel booking, et cetera, we tap out and that's when we recommend, recommend say an Expensify or a Concur. So it, it very much is knowing what your sweet spot is um, and, and we think from a, uh, from a, a source document collection processing bookkeeping productivity tool, Receipt Bank is perfect for the for the SME market, um, and I think Receipt Capture is is perfect for the the uh, that that micro business uh, that's doing a lot of it themselves. Um, you know, 
Dan and Michelle, I, I, I could go on in, in terms of doing a demo, et cetera, but I hope, um, uh, let me just finish off very quickly on this demo because I, I, I can see a, a lot of questions have come in. Yeah. What I would be doing is, let's just go back to the, the Boston Marriott. This is a, a, a receipts come in, and I think I've slowed down on the screen share. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to review all of the information. So it's picked up the document type, the date. Uh, interestingly, Automation Nation is a Canadian client. So it's picked up that it's US dollars and converted it back to Canadian dollars based on the, the, the exchange rate on the 5th of September. Uh, so if you do have clients that are multi-currency, that's going to help pick that up as well. I'm going to review this information, then I'm going to decide where to send it. Um, and if I want, I'm going to send it over to QuickBooks Online. I might send it to an expense report. That would be one of the other destinations. But assuming I publish it over to QuickBooks Online because it's uh, uh, one of the corporate credit cards, uh, all of the data on the right-hand side plus the image is going to go over to QBO. So we're going to put um, a source document alongside every single transaction, going back to that idea of uh, strengthening internal controls for our clients. So it's sitting in QuickBooks Online, and then last but not least, it's also sitting in the archive here as well. So should the IRS or one of the, the, the state tax authorities come knocking, we can come in and we can do a uh, advanced search uh, and because typically the IRS is going to look for meals and entertainment uh, between Q, uh, for, for 2018. In an old fashioned um, folder structure, I'd have to go into each particular supplier, each particular month to, to dig out that information. But in this instance, I can just do a, a search based on all of these uh, uh, items here and then and download that to PDF, download that to CSV as needed. So that's going to sit there for seven years, which is going to be really useful. Again, should the IRS um, or, or uh, just the business owner needs a reminder of how much of a, a particular uh, something they bought this time last year. It's all there at your fingertips, which I think is really critical. Um, so what I'll do is let's just go back to this presentation and let's just get through some of these, uh, these questions. And I know um, I can stick around for maybe five minutes after the webinar, um, but let me just suggest that client expectations are changing. Are you adapting fast enough? Um, the, the really interesting thing is I think your clients are so busy running their, uh, their, their restaurants, so busy running their dental practice, they don't know these nifty tools uh, exist. You've got a really great opportunity at the start of the year to just be like, hey, look, we can help you streamline some of those back office processes. Uh, and I don't think any of your clients would be frustrated if, uh, if, if you picked up the phone, gave them a call and said, hey, Dan, um, got this nifty. I, 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 I was on a webinar and I saw this great tool. It's called Receipt Bank. It's just going to help capture all of those uh, documents. Um, and it's going to make your life infinitely easier. I can't imagine the client's going to be angry about that. <laughs> so just while that slides there, what are some good questions that we might be able to hit, Dan? Because um, what I'd encourage folks to do is, is start up with the partner program uh, and, and, and get going with, uh, with Receipt Bank. Yeah, I think, I think the biggest one and, and the one that I always gravitate towards is, is when, when we talk about integration with, with QuickBooks, QuickBooks is a nebulous term, and some people reside in desktop, some people reside in, in online. Um, how does one integrate with desktop? Does it integrate with desktop? But how does that change, or is it strictly an, an online app? Best, best. Uh, good question. So um, th there's a couple of things. First and foremost, QuickBooks Online, number one integration. We bring over the chart of accounts, the customers, the projects, everything along those lines. We can send both the data and the document into QuickBooks Online. For the QuickBooks desktop product, uh, it's a work in process and, and we do uh, anticipate um, as close to, to mutual functionality coming out after tax season. Our first iteration of it, wasn't great, so it's a constant, never-ending improvement. Uh, but uh, currently, a lot of folks will uh, download and upload that CSV file. Uh, but we do have a desktop integration in the United States, which is a continual work in process, uh, and we do hope to be able to have that uh, available 
uh, post-tax season, uh, much closer to the online experience. But predominantly, what we've touched on there, Dan, is uh, is QuickBooks Online, and QuickBooks Desktop is coming. Gotcha. And, and Damien, I just want to say too, and, and those of you that can hang around for a few more minutes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. But you know, Damien, I travel quite a bit, and I love sometimes you know, when I finish my meal in the airport or whatever, I will just sit and people watch. It is amazing to me how many people take out their phone and take a picture of their receipt. I mean, I see this going on all the time and then they crumple it up and they throw it away. And I mean, I just, I, I wish I had had something like this for my clients years ago, yep. you know, when they would lose the receipts, it wouldn't have them and stuff. And, and I think this is where we were talking earlier about the data management because Damien was showing that screen. It's reading the payee name, the date, the amount, it's reading all of that stuff. We're not doing the data entry. We're just managing that data. Like he said, if we needed to go in and, and assign it to a job or if we needed to do a split or you know things like that. Um, so this is an amazing tool for our clients to just capture all those receipts as they're out and about, things like that. And then Damien, somebody also had a question more about the banking. You were gonna talk about what it does on the banking side? Uh, yeah, correct, yeah, sorry. Uh, so basically the, the, the bank functionality is uh, we read the bank statement for you. So um, as I said, our bank fetch uh, wasn't good enough. Um, but if you if you get the bank statements off your clients, we can read all of the line item detail for you and get that back to you for example, for desktop or, or, or to upload into QBO. So it's, it's really helpful if a new client comes on board and you've got, say, uh, eight months worth of bank statements and data that you've got to get in into, into QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks Online. Uh, so we will read all of the, the line item detail on those bank statements uh, and get it into a file that, that you can then upload uh, into actually into whatever uh, general ledger that you're looking at. So that's how our bank statement functionality works. Yeah, and um, my my first uh, first conference, you know, going to like Scaling New Heights, um, I was just overwhelmed with the options that are in this space. Like, um, you know, how does this compare, you know, to a NEAT or um, auto entry, uh, those, those types of things. So. Yeah, I, I think our, our, probably, Dan, our closest competitor would be auto entry. Uh, and, and what I would suggest is, is do a demo of both, because I think what happens is the interface will, one of the interfaces will speak to you more clearly. Obviously, I'm biased. I, I think the receipt <laughs> bank interface is, is one of the best in the world. Uh, so I would, so I think our closest competitor would be auto entry. So I would encourage you to, to take a look at both and see which functionality, see which partner program, see which user interface, see what client experience um, appeals to you the best. Um, if we look at say Neat and Hubdoc, Hubdoc has got some bank fetch functionality there, but uh, again, we, we learned from them that uh, we can't do it um, within that 99% success rate. So we, uh, we won't uh, use it, but I, I would say, um, between Hubdoc, Neat, uh, some of the other, uh, th there will be varying levels of functionality. Um, and I think what I've found is uh, that the Receipt Bank uh, is much more of a bookkeeper's tool, an accounting firm's tool, uh, as well as having those client-facing tools. So that's what I would say. Um, but I could obviously give you a laundry list of, of how we <laughs> do it. I don't think we have well, and, and Damien, I would say too that, that when we look at taking our firms and automating the processes for ourselves and for our clients, I think Receipt Bank is just a must-have tool. I mean, and I just really think that should be part of our package and part of our system um, and processes and get our clients using that. And like you said, it's the beginning of the year. It's a great opportunity. And, and like Damien mentioned too, you know, when your clients – when you give them a solution like, look, all you have to do is take a picture of your receipt. How easy could that be? Um, I, I think it's a, a very high value tool um, for us and our clients. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll question here um, to see how interested you guys are in learning more about Receipt Bank. Would you like them to follow up with you ASAP? Would you like to join another webinar in the future? Because I know you all had some questions and we did not get to all the questions. Um, and I will make sure, Damon, you'll, you'll have people following up um, 
with those people that are interested after this webinar. So we will share your, you know, how interested you are with them so they can follow up with you. But I encourage you, Receipt Bank does a great job of helping us and working with their partners, us as accounting professionals. I would encourage you to reach out to them because this is a must have tool um, for you to automate and standardize. Um, so I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, Dan, did you notice any questions that we really want to ask Damien quick before he has to go? Um, you know, the, the, the accountants always want to know what's it cost. <laughs> yeah. <What's> the, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a good one. Uh, so basically you can go to our website and you'll see what the, the recommended retail price is. Uh, and then receipt bank because, uh, for accountants, we have a, a, a different price that's available for accountants and it depends on the number of licenses that you have. So I think it starts at about $25 per client per month, but that comes down quite quickly as you buy more. But um, comparatively, that $25 product for accountants, I think the sticker price is about $40 uh, on the website. So it depends on the, the number of clients that you have that, that would be ready for it now, and then what you grow into. So we have a bundled, um, a bundled model, uh, and talking with the team would be the best way to, to find out what, what's exactly right for your firm, depending on where you are on that, that sort of automation QBO journey. And I'll tell you what, the, the whole idea that for 25 bucks a month, we can get all of these receipts in there and we can, you know, get all these things. I mean, it's just to me, that's a no brainer. Um, the benefits and the time savings are just huge there. So, okay. Um, I went ahead and closed that poll question. Any if I could just yeah, just make one last comment of yes, the efficiency and time saving is there, um, but but the other side of things, folks, is the ability to protect our clients, to strengthen their internal controls, to give them peace of mind. I, I think that's a really strong value proposition that we should be talking to all of our clients about. And I think uh, uh, pro advisors, accountants, bookkeepers are the perfect people to be having that conversation. So that will be my last comment. I, I think that's a great comment there. So, and again, Damien, uh, Receipt Bank has that partner program there. Um, do you have a slide at the end with your, there, okay. So there's some tools too. I thought I saw that. Uh, Receipt Bank's website has amazing information out there. Um, they've got these eBooks out there that you can check out. Um, and then they will send you all that template on the client services and who's doing what, um, you and the client um, and things like that. Uh, so go check out the website and I encourage you guys to join their partner program. Um, you guys just, you do a wonderful service for helping accounting professionals to start and grow their, pro their firm. So I think it's great. So thank you, Damien, for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. Glad we could have you there. Um, Dan, any last comments? No, this was this was great. Um, just to be able to sort through, you know, the myriad of options that that are out there, you know, and just have a, a guided tour. <laughs> and I I think this comment from Lillian sums it up. I can't imagine not having receipt bank. So I think that's that's a very true statement there. So I encourage you guys to check it out. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks uh, for what's new in QuickBooks Online Accountant. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.